promising race pupil returns. Uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital. Something your race, my Vistic communists, never did. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these... <laughs> of course it does. You are a degenerate. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cult. Meshed stoically looks to the distance in silence. Cholian degenerate shows signs of racial self-reflection. How did you accomplish this little feat? So it would seem, Thor of Hull. I find myself at a crossroads. On one hand, this pathetic self-therapy has and, of course, you will not be able to free yourself from the yoke of rule. If the Revacholian degenerate is capable of critical thought, he may still prove a race adversary. Why should I help my- Jean, baby. Do the heroic thing. Very well. You may enter once. Our conversa- Well done. second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transact and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol. It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are the draw slide. of documents and the same that you already went through all of these. Look how blurry hermeneutics was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters. You are a police officer, not a spiritual healer. You can Is that what you're doing with those folders over there? 
My thought exactly, officer. Shall we? Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a list. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Everard Clare, probably, the head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. What is so special about this borscht? Code for drugs? Booze? Blood? Remember, Leo, all items on the list. The drawer slide. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you. Pauline cloak is still hanging on the railing, the white rectangle of the River Shoals citizens. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of It's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. I'm not here to tell you what to do, detective. You take the painkillers. They are yours now. 
Oh boy, where to start? Don't think about that. Quick, think about something else. Maybe this was a bad... You stand and exit the booth. If you must. But please hurry. We are... Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and this... It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, René, is dressed in a Royal Carabinet uniform. Why did you take that picture of René? You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long as it doesn't take up a whole lot. control panel with several knobs, two buttons marked mar marsh on with a loud grind. The crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk. The, the harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again. The rusty control. A faint smell. I can't see how that was worth the wreckers. The crane does not return. Container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Container, container, used to be wild pines. Container, container. The lyrics, the accent. Container, Evra, Evra, Evra. He looks after everyone. Huh? Well, I see you are not a union man, Mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, 
I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Oh yes, born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. I was about ten then. Too old to look. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes I am, yes I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Everything is so pretty in red. You and Leo look like brothers as you glance around with similar childlike wonder. The old man whistles and hums a jaunty tune to himself. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean Le But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's you. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everard telling them to take some time off. I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in... Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. I remember I was the runt of the class. <laughs> the bigger boys always used to pick on me. You see, I had a bit of a temper back in the day. Flew off the hand, but Miss Everett and his brother always came to help. Once they beat old Noel Becker so bad he needed stitches on his head. <laughs> Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar are real nice guys, mister. You should go talk to Mr. Everard. Yes, yes, everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way, Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Lee. I'm like Mr. Everard's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewey Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Oh Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone and when she... He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pill. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Doctor Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Be so Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. Oh, Lizzie, she is a real... He respect... But she's a real... If me miss... Doctor... So Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Yes, yes, I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Oh, 
Sure, Master. Sure. You do that, yes? He didn't actually understand what you meant. And now he's just nodding along. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded. Oh, you want Mr. Everhart then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were... Oh, Mr. Ever is usually in his office, of course. But you go... Bye-bye now. Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, with a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare. Head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair on the other. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal... The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, uh, by the way... I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners. It, this should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Don't mention it. But also, don't forget it. I'm just kidding, of course. He's not. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you... His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational when he said, don't worry. He actually meant, be very worried. I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into... It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Miss. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Officer. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. 
You're about to cry, aren't you? Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What? Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. What an odd demonstration of... Huh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid... Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions, pertain. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin A's. I know e I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to- Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fantastic, my friend. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Honestly, I didn't want to bring it up, Harry. I heard you have become Measurehead's race pupil. Personally, I'm not big on the whole race thing. Let me assure you, I'm very glad you're comfortable sharing this with me. Anyway, I assure you, I am a... Of course, let us dispatch with a format... My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fan... I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game... I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is, I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address, and you were probably right. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents, Mr. Kitsuragi? Would you mind? Me and Harry at. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census... He got the name from the Census Bureau, and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. That means he doesn't really know anything of a pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Yes, your lost gun. 
My best man. Your gun will- The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you'll get... One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Aids. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you find your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The this particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's... His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss. Of course, I have no interest in what she is doing. But I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I re Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about it. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. 